right. Next up, we have Larry Diamond. He'll be presenting Metesco, an emerging growth disruptive and transformational healthcare company trading on the OTCQB under the symbol MITI, otherwise known as Mighty. Welcome, Larry. Good morning, Anna. All right, take it away. Excellent. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here today. Uh, Matesco uh, Corporation um, has been around for uh, since 2009, but was reinvented back uh, in 2019 when I joined the organization. Um, if we can skip ahead one slide. Um, before we get into this, I'm just going to mention the fact that we are going to be talking about uh, forward-looking statements. So uh, all the standard language uh, that the attorneys want me to talk about is written here on the slide, but uh, it's obviously not promises, they're forecasts that we'll be talking about and looking into the future. Next slide, please. So what we did in uh, 2019 is we repositioned the company as a healthcare technology company. Um, my experience with 25 years in healthcare, I've been able to see firsthand how the application of technology has enabled uh, the improvement of healthcare, both from a quality perspective and a cost reduction perspective. Uh, move to the next slide. So with that effort, what we went out to do is to look for businesses that really focus on the consumer. Many of the companies that we've seen here today have been very much focused on the consumer. And why is that? Is because the consumer is incredibly powerful, both here in the United States and abroad. They have raised their voice and said there are certain things they want, and it's the responsibility of the industry to deliver that. Healthcare is unique because it's been controlled by so many other institutions, whether it's the insurance companies, whether it's the hospitals, whether it's the physicians. And consumers in general have become very dissatisfied. We've seen, uh, you know, today healthcare costs from an institutional perspective account for one sixth of gross domestic product. What that means is, is that's just not un, that's not sustainable for any economy, uh, especially the U.S. And so we need innovation and technology. We've seen uh, over the last 10 years, technology has reshaped so many industries, and it's finally ready for healthcare to be reshaped. And core to that reshaping process is improving quality, lowering cost, and adding convenience. So when we look out there and recognizing that we are a smaller entity, we look for um, low cost acquisitions, and then we look at international, because international disproportionately are government run healthcare systems. And so they've had to fund a lot of innovation and technology, and but they don't have the opportunity to really get their return on investment overseas. And we see an opportunity to bring a lot of that technology to the US. And by focusing there, we are confident that we can capture the steepest part of the growth curve. Next slide. So part of that process, obviously, is being recognized in the market to have the capital to build this. And this has begun. So if we go to the next slide, what you see here is Matesco uh, in the first quarter of this year was recognized that we are moving from a pre-revenue company to a revenue company. Our first acquisition, which was the Good Clinic, and I'll dig into that in a little bit, we are now producing revenue in that business unit. Um, the stock price has performed. It's moved from uh, two and a half cents up to uh, as high as uh, 59 cents and gives us a market cap just shy of about $100 million. Important in that is, you know, we have 187 million shares outstanding and the investors in the business are a lot of management. Management has invested, we just raised a little over $2 million through friends and family and restricted shares. And the other piece that when I joined, which was very important to me, was to get rid of the convertible debt that the company had used historically when it was pre-revenue, and we have done that. So all our convertible debt obligations have been satisfied, and we are now moving forward. Um, the thing, to give you an idea of the shift in stock price and valuation of the company, has been very broad. So we went from about 900 investors to now approaching almost 10,000 investors in the last 45 days. 
So huge response from the industry out there and from consumers recognizing that this is something of great significance. Well, why? You know, when you look at some of the competitors that we have out there, folks like Oak Street Health or uh, One Life Medical, both those companies, one is a $7 billion company, one is a uh, um, $15 billion market value company. These, both these companies are not producing profits yet. They're losing money. Why is that? They're growing. They're in growth mode to open clinics. Just slightly different model than what we're doing, but the market recognizes that healthcare is a huge opportunity. There's a shortage of primary care. And so folks are recognizing we have to solve healthcare because it's so expensive. Part of that has been validated. We, uh, we retained uh, Goldman Small Cap Research who published a research report for us, um, independent research report, but it is paid research. And based upon looking at the data that we have and comparing it to our competitors, they put a $2 price target uh, on our stock over the next six to 12 months. Next slide. Uh, this, this research is available online at their, at their website at Goldman Small Cap Research. Next slide. And a couple of things to highlight that I wanted to just uh, bring attention to in there is um, the fact is now that we've cleaned up our balance sheet and strengthened it, we are ready to take the capital that we've raised and will continue to raise to straight line growth of adding clinics. And so with each clinic, revenue increases, membership increases, and our ability to continue on this plan of building the company moves forward. Simply put, based upon what Goldman said, is management has built a better mousetrap. And that better mousetrap is significant. We're gonna get into the details of that here in just a couple slides, if we can move ahead. So fundamentally, what we've been able to do to strengthen the position of the organization is first off, um, through long-term shareholders and management, we were able to raise $2 million uh, in res from restricted stock. So it's not stock that can be put out into the marketplace. Um, we've gotten rid of the convertible debt and we are preparing for an uplist to the New York American is what we anticipate where we will uplist. We're in that process right now, working with council to get ready for that. And then we are also looking at a possible dual listing in Europe. And um, because we look towards Europe as potential for both revenue for other businesses, as well as for sources of capital, that is why we're looking at, uh, at the European market as a potential dual listing uh, there. With regards to getting ready for growth, um, we have our first clinic open in Minneapolis. We have also have three LOIs that are signed on additional clinics. One is in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and two are in, uh, in Denver. That's actually with our current landlord, Lennar, which is a very large residential um, developer. They have 52 high-rise developments across the United States, and we're in conversation to partner with those to put clinics inside each of those sites. Additionally, in Minnesota, we have four sites um, that we are in various stages of negotiation for clinics to open up there. And then we'll be looking at, in addition to the Minneapolis marketplace and the Denver marketplace, we'll be looking at Florida and New York as add-on locations for clinics. When it comes to, uh, we can go to the next slide. One more. One more, yeah. So when we look at acquisitions, obviously we have the good clinic in the portfolio at this time. We do have one piece of software which is currently being used in the compounding pharmacies for electronic prescribing. So that is also in the portfolio, but really what we're looking for in acquisitions is number one, um, identifying primary care clinics that we can roll into the good clinic model. And then looking at all the other spaces within healthcare, whether it's uh, personal health apps, telehealth, artificial intelligence, um, all these have the ability to contribute to the efficiency and effectiveness of the primary care clinic experience. And so when we look at acquisitions, we're looking to drive efficiency and effectiveness of the good clinic business. Next slide. How will we structure this? Next slide. 
what we have set up is really the fundamental structure of a holding company. So we have Metesco as the parent organization, and we've already set up um, a division in Dublin, Ireland, so that we can acquire businesses there. And then we have Metesco North America, which holds the good clinic and then other businesses that will bring into that business. So we're setting up an infrastructure or blueprint for a holding company that allows us to bring the efficiencies and effectiveness of a holding company to smaller businesses that we acquire and then integrate them across the, the mutual platforms of the good clinic and anything else that we might acquire. But our focus at this time very much is the good clinic and opening and expanding that business. Next slide. So what is the good clinic? Fundamentally, the good clinic is a nurse practitioner led primary care clinic model. Next slide. Why is it timely? It's timely because 81% of consumers are not satisfied with their healthcare experience. And the number one reason, it's not personalized. Most things today in society have always been uh, focused on mass distribution. And healthcare is very different because what makes me different from you is pretty significant. And if a clinician or the healthcare experience or your pharmaceutical rep doesn't adjust to who you are, then it becomes less meaningful and you're less likely to participate. So if we go to the next slide, the other statistics there that are so powerful for what we're doing is that 90% of metropolitan markets have very high density of populations. We're losing rural America. Um, that creates a problem for the country, but an opportunity for a business like ours because we're focused on what 80% of Americans want, which is more convenience. COVID has done some horrible things. It's also done some good things. One of the things is that a lot of us are working at home. Right now, I'm working at home. And the impact of that is my, uh, the research is showing that my, um, my travel patterns are gonna shrink by close to 75%. So my grocery store, my pharmacy, my doctor, COVID is impacting the way we live our lives very dramatically. And convenience is paramount to any service that we're delivering. So to that end, next slide. The good clinic model is built about a residential concept. Here's the picture of the first clinic in Northeast Minneapolis in the Nord House. This is a 600 unit development that's managed by Lennar, a New York Stock Exchange traded company. Um, as I mentioned, they have 52 of these high rises around the country. And they also have a lot of single family um, developments around the country. And they're interested in bringing us into each of these because for them, healthcare is viewed as the next breakthrough amenity. We had the gym, you had the movie room, you had the um, community room in the swimming pool. But if in this day and age, having a residential community that is focused on healthy living and improved lifestyle, having a clinic there very much differentiates for them what they're offering to their residents. Next slide. So as I mentioned, you know, convenience and a personalized care approach is key and core to what we're doing. Um, building that community relationship is a big part of what we do because using the community room, we can provide education to residents about how to improve their lifestyle. What are the opportunities to improve their diet, their ex uh, exercise, their stress levels? Because of this, our approach is focused on wellness. It's not sick care. And so the team that is building this is the same team that took Minute Clinic, which many of you know, from about 19 units up to 500 units in less than three years and sold it to CVS. That team, uh, Michael Howe, Dr. Woodburn, Dr. Hafner, and Dr. Smith, really understand what it means to create a personalized healthcare experience. They understand what it takes to grow a business. And so core to this business is 
having that wellness visit where visits are pre-planned, similar to what your dentist does, will we anticipate that we will actually be able to, instead of two visits per patient per year, we're gonna be able to deliver four to six pa visits per patient per year. So a much more frequent interaction focused on health as opposed to on sickness. About half of those visits are going to be virtual visits, short check-ins against the plan that was co-created with the consumer and checking in to make sure that they're having success and if they're barriers, how do we break those barriers? That helps us in reducing the, um, reducing the cost of interaction for them. It allows us to increase our revenue. We are doing a integration of new, um, Eastern and Western medicine. So it's, uh, we'll have nutraceuticals, vitamins, supplements, essential oils. And for patients who are focused on uh, having a broader approach to their health, we'll be able to supply those uh, products to them. And as a result, the average revenue per visit will actually increase as compared to other types of um, primary care practices. Because we're partnering with the because we're partnering with the building um, and the residential and the developers, we will be able to build our panel of membership faster than is typical because they're helping us cross promote inside the building and then also in the community. And again, technology is core to what we're doing to be there on a just in time basis, creating that personalized experience. We have the medical record. And so when someone does get sick and they need to have an intervention, need an antibiotic or something like that, we know, unlike retail health, their situation and can give the best medicine right from the start. Next slide. So I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that I believe are core is, is the low cost client acquisition. This is really key, focusing on the high density in cities and these residential centers and focusing on healthy living. Um, next, it's the look good and feel good. We've expanded the scope of primary care. So we're including basic behavioral health, we're including nutraceuticals, and we're including basic um, dermatological services. So really being able to offer a broader approach for folks that are looking to stay healthy and stay vital and improve the quality of life that they have. And technology, we will deploy technology when it's necessary, whether it's monitoring technology, whether it's a pedometer to track uh, exercise, we'll have those technologies to implement when a patient needs those. Why nurse practitioners? Nurse practitioners, probably many of you today already see a nurse practitioner when you go to, um, to your primary care provider. Nurse practitioners, are 89% uh, of them, I believe the statistic is, are already certified in primary care. Today, medical schools are just not graduating enough doctors to meet the demand. The AMA says we're short by about 25,000 primary care providers in America. What does that mean? It means that our competitors and us have plenty of room to provide services and not bump into each other. The market is huge and there's a significant opportunity and a need to be filled. The other piece that's core to what we're doing is making sure that we can build out these clinics quickly in our build. Obviously, as you're building your panel, you're experiencing negative cash flow. And so for us, not only is it that partnership with the residential community, but what we've done is we're using uh, pre-paneled walls so that we can actually open a clinic in about eight weeks from the day that we get our building permit. So we're shorted, shortening the time it takes to stand up a clinic. And then, as I mentioned before, there are developers who are interested in having us fill in the community house of single family developments. And so we're looking at others, other models in addition to our current model, which is a 3,000 square foot um, clinic, which compares to the more typical clinic, which is about 9,000 square feet. We're actually looking at much smaller clinics, potentially 1,200 square feet, and even smaller to go in as a telehealth clinic into single family uh, developments. So we're looking at all the possibilities of how do you get to where people live to be there on a convenient basis, in addition to using telehealth technology when, and be there when the person needs us most. 
Next slide. So core to what we, we talk about is our, our um, expertise, education, and empathy. So really it's about the client experience. It's about activation. And this is real important. In any other industry, if you knew what a person needed to be successful in, in working with your product, it'd be a home run. Well, in healthcare, we actually have something like that. It's called patient activation measure, and it actually defines at the 95% confidence level who a person is and what they need in order to be successful participating in healthcare. How many times have we heard doctors say, my patients don't do what I asked them to do? Well, we're solving that by understanding that all people cannot consume all instructions and you really have to personalize it. And this tool allows us to make it a unique experience for every person who walks through the door or connects to us on our video connection. And fundamentally, that's how we get to the integration into lifestyle. Whether you're recovering from an illness, whether you're competing for a marathon, marathon we can provide the service that will help you achieve the goals that we have mutually set out for you. Next slide. Next slide. The healthcare landscape is very broad. There's devices, there's disease specific focus, there's applications. We look at all of those as tools that we'll be looking at. It's a holistic approach based upon what the customer wants to accomplish. So we'll use all these things to put them together and we'll partner or we may acquire some of these solutions, but really what it comes down to is we have to match the intervention to what the customer is trying to accomplish. Next slide. Core to what we're doing is, is having that medical record and making sure that we are delivering to that patient. Telehealth only, that's great, it's focused on sick care. And when you need that, it's phenomenal. Ready Health has been a great solution for the country in solving a lot of problems of access because of the shortage of, of primary care providers. Concierge medicine, if you can afford it, it's great. Our approach is, is we will work with consumers, whether they have insurance on Medicare, Medicaid, they want to pay for it out of pocket. Um, we will work with everybody and we will work whether it's covered by insurance or if you want to buy something out of your own pocket. We're going to focus on a plan that is co-developed and we're going to deliver to that based upon what the customer wants because the customer is king here. Next slide. I'm going to skip ahead. Next slide. So let me introduce the team at the Good Clinic. We'll go ahead one more slide. Michael Hall has a very rich experience. As I mentioned, all the folks here were at Minute Clinic. Many have been involved in many early stage companies and have brought them to significant commercial value and sold them off. Uh, Michael comes out of P&G and out of Minute Clinic and um, several other Verity brands, understands the consumer and the importance of how you package up a service to meet the consumer need. Dr. Hafner, Dr. Smith and Dr. Woodburn all have deep experience in healthcare and really add depth and understanding to what you have to do in order to deliver tremendous value to the consumer in their healthcare journey. Next slide. The team at Metesco, one more slide. We've assembled a board of directors um, of international recognition, um, you know, uh, Ron Rewall has been the CEO of several public companies, been very successful building and, and monetizing the value for his shareholders. Tom Broadmerkel similarly has worked at some of the largest healthcare institutions in the country, has built companies and sold them off. Dr. Faraz Nakvi, Harvard trained uh, physician, sits on the board over at the uh, University of Colorado Medical Center. Um, he actually is one of the most successful uh, um, portfolio managers in healthcare and is there to help us uh, again advise on building this business. And then uh, Juan Carlos Sitagiri, um, he has served two uh, administrations, both Democrat and Republic, helping to build uh, 
uh, good uh, business relationships with uh, internationally. So we bring a huge breadth of uh, experience on how we build this company um, to grow much bigger than it is. It's unusual to find this kind of team that's put together. Um, and it's, you know, for a lot of the advisors that we've been talking to on best capital structure and how to raise money, really wanted us to take the business private with the, with the good clinic here as the engine. And we believe it's for all our shareholders to benefit. We've had shareholders that have been here for a long time and they deserve to get the right, the kind of return. Everyone on the team and management team is invested in this business and we will all uh, benefit as a result of growing this business at a significant rate. Next slide. Again, you will be able to download this. You can see uh, some of our advisors that we have here, who we are, some of the statistics on the stock. And I believe that is the conclusion. We have a couple minutes for questions. Yes, thank you so much, Larry. All right, we do have three questions from our audience. Uh, what is the estimated time frame for the uplist? Um, so we're working on the uplist right now, and the um, we're looking to be able to achieve it before the May time frame, I guess is the best way to put it. Okay. And would you guys be looking into acquiring more clinics in North America to expand faster? Um, that is core to what we're doing. I think Michael Hall is on the phone right now as well. He is the CEO of the Good Clinic. Michael, are you there? He's not there. Okay. Um, so our plan right now is we are going to build both de novo, so brand new clinics, but we are also looking to acquire clinics. And we would then over time convert them into the good clinic model. So when we talk about opening 50 clinics over the next uh, three years, based upon acquisitions, we would hope uh, and plan to exceed that number based upon the availability and reasonable price of acquiring clinics in the marketplace. Okay, last question, great question for all of these companies. If you had unlimited funding, how fast could you expand your business? Wow, that's a great question. Um, you know, at this point, I think the best example is what uh, the Good Clinic team did at Minute Clinic, going from, uh, going from the uh, 19 clinics to 500 in, in under three years. You know, our partnerships with Lennar, they already have 56 locations they'd like us to go into. We have another developer that we're in negotiations with for something similar. So, you know, for us, you know, to get to 250, you know, 300 uh, clinics over the next five, uh, five to seven years probably is a very doable number with unlimited funding. All right, Larry, thank you so much for presenting Metesco. It definitely is a mighty endeavor. Very much looking forward to seeing all your updates. Great, thank you, Anna. All right.